What we're going to be going over here is governmental and not-for-profit organizations and how they would account for what they call restricted assets. And we'll be mainly looking at cash as this restricted assets. Okay, so first for the general rules that these governmental bodies would follow here uh, for the restricted assets. And the key points would be here, first, there would be a limitations imposed on the cash or investments which makes them available only for the designated purposes here. So if the governmental body here receives some restricted assets, cash or so forth here, they can only spend that cash for the purpose that it's designated for or the purpose that the governmental uh, unit here, the governmental body designates this cash to be spent on. Okay, and secondly, if you receive restricted money here, you cannot recognize it as revenue until it's spent for the intended purpose here. And thirdly, donor restricted funds, those would be externally restricted funds, that's when a third party says you can only spend the money received for the designated purpose here. So that would be specified by the donor here, be it the federal state or some other agent here, the agency that's sending the government some money. And they would specify how that money has to be spent. And fourthly here, if you have internally restricted funds, that is the governmental body or the organization internally within the organization restricts some funds here, you'd be recording a restricted asset and a related liability here. And they're recorded in specially designated accounts to assure that the funds here are segregated from the other funding here in the organization or the governmental unit. Okay, so let's look, we're going to be looking at three cases here. So let's first look at this internally restricted funding or money here. And this would be the case here where, let's just say for example here that some revenue bonds are being issued for a specific project here. So just say the governmental body is going to build a special building here and they're going to issue some bonds here to pay for that building. So what you have to do here, you have to set up some restricted assets and related liabilities here. And they would re be recorded in specially designated accounts. So the key is here, we're looking at it in T account form. You're going to have to designate or record exactly the account that you're going to be uh, bringing this money into and how you're in the account that you're going to be taking this money out of based on the restrictions that you're going to have set up here. So let's look at the case here first where they're going to issue a bond here to pay for that new building that they're going to build. And what they would do here, let's look at it in our T account form here. So they'd have bonds, they'd have their account here, bonds payable, and it's going to be issued for the specific project ID. So you're going to have to list the specific project that you're talking about here as that liability. So what they would do, let's just say, for example, it issued $500,000 worth of bonds here pay for that project. So you'd credit your bonds payable here for $500,000 as your liability. Now you're going to move over into this cash account. You're going to actually receive some cash here, but you're going to have to have it uh, specifically designated here for the restricted assets that you're talking about. So you're going to have a restricted assets here, that revenue bond cash. Again, sp specify the exact project that you're talking about here. So in this case, you would debit your restricted assets here for $500,000. The proceeds received from that bond that was issued. Now, what you're going to do here is we're going to set up just we're just looking at this in the terms of these restricted assets here as cash receipts so what you're going to do here for example we're going to have issued some contracts for building that new building here so we're going to have a contracts payable here and the key is on your contracts payable here for uh, building that new building you have to identify where those uh, from where the money is going to be paid out of for the payables here on the contract. And that's going to come from the restricted assets here. So you'd have to identify uh, in your contracts payable the restricted asset for the specific project ID. So let's just say, for example, here, for to date here, we have a credit or we have a payable here on the contract of $200,000. Okay, so we've got the payable set up here at $200,000. So we'll just move over to our construction and progress account here. Again, for the specific pro project that you're talking about, debit that here for $200,000. Increase your construction and progress to whatever you have here today. Okay, so now we come along here and we're gonna have to pay 
for that payable on that contract here. So let's just say we had the credit of 200,000, we pay the total amount here of 200,000. So debit our contracts payable here for $200,000. But this it has to be paid out of those restricted assets here, that revenue bond that was issued for the putting up that new building here. And you would have coming out of that cash account here from your restricted assets. So you would be crediting your restricted assets here for the cash account for that revenue bond that was issued here for that building, credit it for $200,000. So the key is here, uh, your payables or whatever money you're paying for on this project here has to come out of those restricted assets. So this is where you have to segregate and identify the restricted dollars here and the related liability. So we have a related liability here as our bonds payable, our contracts payable here, and then we have our restricted assets here uh, based on the, our assets here, our cash amount. This is the cash. The payables have to come out of this cash account because we issued the bonds here and it went into the restricted assets. Now when we have our payables here on the contract, it has to come out of those restricted assets. So the key is here first, your bond pro streets are, in this case, restricted assets or cash here. And then secondly, the commitments to payable are payable from the restricted assets. So any uh, commitments that we have, those contract commitments, have to come out of those restricted assets. And the bonds payable that we issued had to be put, or the cash had to go into the restricted assets. Okay, so that's really how you would handle some internally restricted funding here to keep your uh, manage your cash account here as a restricted assets. Okay, so next let's go up here and look at our second case. Now this would be the example where you would have a federal or state grant here. And this would be donor restricted money or funding that the uh, locality or the local government unit is going to receive here. So this is donor, donor restricted money. This is where you're going to apply the restricted dollar uh, rule here, cash rule for the revenue that you receive here. So the key is here, when you're receiving those restricted dollars, they're gonna be externally restricted in this case because they're gonna come in from, say, a federal or state grant here, and this is where we apply the revenue rule. That is, we cannot recognize any revenue here until those dollars that we receive here from those restricted dollars that we receive are actually spent. Okay, so let's look at the case here where our example here, local government records some special revenue here as deferred revenue here until, and we're going to be looking at uh, food stamp coupons here in this example. And uh, food stamp coupons are distributed to recipients in the local uh, government or governmental unit here for buying food stamps. So are for buying food here. So it's really going to be a federal grant here and it's administered administered through the state. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we have, this is the case here where, uh, talking about that special rule here where restricted money cannot be recognized here in revenue until the dollars are actually spent. So in, we would have to set up, under our local government unit here, we'd have to identify exactly where, where those revenues are coming from but we would have a deferred revenues account here as these food stamp coupons that are gonna be distributed here. And then we're gonna have a revenues account here for the food stamp coupons here and also our food stamp coupons themselves here as an asset account. So what we want to do here, and we're also gonna have our expenditures here for the food stamps. So the key is here, we're getting those dollars in here from say the state, for example. The state has issued some funding here, $100,000 worth of uh, food stamp coupons or a state gr or federal grant that has to be administered to local recipients here for food stamps. So first off, deferred revenues. We can't recognize any rev revenues here until those stamps are distributed to the recipient. So we take our deferred revenues account here, again for food stamps, we are gonna say 100,000 here was received here from the state for this food stamps here. So we credit deferred revenues here for 100,000 and then we move over to our food stamp coupons, our asset account here that uh, it would be for this federal program here debit that here for $100,000. So that's the funding that we received here and we're gonna, it's gonna be a deferred revenue 
until those food stamps are actually distributed here. So this is the case here. Now we're going to come in our we're going to distribute 90,000 of these uh, dollars worth of these food stamp coupons here to uh, the recipients of those food stamps. So in our deferred revenues account here, we're going to credit that here for 90,000 or debit, excuse me, for $90,000, reduce that our deferred revenues. And this is the case here where we can move it over now into our revenues account and recognize our revenues here based on the distribution distribution of those food stamps. So here's after the dollars are spent, now we can recognize our revenues. And I'm talking about dollars spent here, not by the food stamp recipients, but they're spent here by the local government that it's that's administering that food stamp program here. So credit your revenues here for $90,000. We received funding of 100,000, but we only distributed 90,000. So this is the case where we can only recognize the revenues based on the um, after those ninety thousand dollars was spent, so can't recognize the whole hundred thousand, only the ninety thousand here. And then the other thing is for our expenditures here, we also have expenditures involved in 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 this example here for those food stamps. So in our asset account here, the food stamp coupons. Well, we had that debit amount here for hundred thousand dollars. Now ninety thousand was distributed here, so we would credit or reduce our asset account here for food stamp. Uh, uh, coupons here by 90,000 after the distribution here and then the debit is going to go to expenditures here for food stamps. So for debit that here for $90,000 based on our distribution. Again we're recognizing our expenditures here after those dollars are spent. So the key is here uh, uh, again the, we recognize only deferred revenue here for this these food stamp until the coupons are actually distributed then we recognize our revenue here and our expense uh, we realize those based on the amount of the funding or the dollars that were actually distributed to the recipients so the rule is here when we're talking about those restricted dollars here they're donor restricted dollars they were restricted by actually the federal government here but administrated through, through the state government here as a grant essentially that we're looking at here uh, the rule is you recognize revenue only after those dollars are spent and what we're talking about spent here is the distribution in this case of those uh, food stamps to the recipients so uh, and they have to, the other thing is they have to be spent for the intended purpose. So they, I guess we better mention that here, the end, that intended purpose here. Uh, the dollars here, well, the intended purpose was food coupons to the local recipients here. And this is, and we, we actually distributed those food coupons as required by the uh, federal government here through the, through the estate administration here. So we actually spent the money here for the intended purpose. So the key is you can only recognize revenue here until the dollars are spent, but they also have to be spent for the intended purpose. Okay, so we looked at a basic example here, donor restricted money and it's externally restricted money here and it was really a, a federal administered through the state here, grant, a federal grant here for these food stamps. So when we're talking about that donor restricted money here, uh, you can only, you can, you have to apply the restricted money rule here essentially. That is, you can't recognize any revenues here until the dollars are spent and then they, the revenues that you recognize, they can only be spent for the intended purpose. So that's the key here when you're applying that restricted dollar revenue rule here for externally restricted funding here. Okay, and that's donor restricted funding in this case. Now let's go look at our last case here. This is an example, okay, this is the example here uh, really for service fees collection versus services provided here. So we're gonna have some cash collections designated uh, to provide some services here. It could be a, looking at a utility service or something of that nature here provided by the local government, let's say the city for example. Okay, so let's go, and this is the case here. Again, we're gonna be dealing with deferred revenues versus revenues that we're gonna recognize here. So in this case, you would have everything in these accounts set up as service fees here. We're gonna have some deferred revenues here for service fees and then we're going to be looking at the revenues that we recognize here. So this is the case 
let's just let's just go through our example here. We're going to have some cash collections here for some service fees. We're going to actually collect three hundred and seventy thousand dollars here in cash for some services that are being provided here to our customers. And what we're going to do here, our rev we're going to be looking at. Uh, we're going to have some deferred revenues here. We're going to calculate that out to be twenty thousand dollars, and then based on the revenues here, we're going to recognize our revenues here after these services are provided again here. So actually, we're looking at modified accrual accounting for governmental accounting. So let's look at start with our cash account here. We had a debit here, uh, cash received, uh, collected here of three hundred seventy thousand dollars, and then along with that, we're going to have some accounts receivable here for service fees. They haven't been paid yet here. Some debit that here for ten thousand dollars. So we didn't receive that cash yet. That's still as a receivable. So now let's calculate our deferred revenues versus what we recognized here at revenue. So for our revenues, we're going to recognize three hundred and sixty thousand dollars. So let's look at and there would be twenty thousand here in deferred revenue. So let's look at how we calculate that. Cash amount we receive three hundred seventy thousand dollars. Accounts receivable we have ten thousand in our accounts receivable. So we're sitting with uh, three hundred and eighty thousand here in cash in our accounts receivable. Now we actually earned three hundred and sixty thousand dollars so we actually provided here services for three hundred and sixty thousand dollars that's the key here so we have on account here plus the cash received the three hundred eighty thousand we earned three hundred and sixty thousand of the three hundred eighty thousand so the remaining amount here of twenty thousand here is going to be deferred revenues here. So the only key, the only point is here, uh, we have to make a distinction here when we're talking about modified accrual accounting here and uh, how we recognize our revenues here. Revenues here were recognized based on those services provided here. So again, we follow the revenue rule here. You do not realize any revenue here until the services are provided. In this case, we provided 360000 So, based on, just for our example here, just based on our collections here again in cash, and based on the revenues that we actually provided, we ended up with some deferred revenues here. In this case, $20,000 worth. But, just going back to our example here, say we provided a whole lot less services. We only provided, say, $300,000 here in revenues or services were provided, so we could only record revenues, say, earned here of $300,000. So the re balance would go into deferred revenues here. It would be an increase, what, from uh, another $60,000. So our deferred revenues here would have been credited uh, up to $80,000, another 60 added on to the 20000 Okay, so we went through some basic examples here for where we're talking about restricted assets. This last one really wasn't so much on restricted assets, only the fact and how you recognize your revenues here. But again, going back to the cash account here, it would be restricted for the service fees here. That's the point here. Everything everything we're dealing with in our cash account would be those service fees that we have to provide here and in our revenues that would be uh, revenues that we earn for the services that we provided. Okay so we went through three basic examples here and uh, for accounting for restricted assets here and uh, maybe we should go up to this last one or this second one that we're talking about here. The key is here when you're talking about uh, restrictions here they're either internally restricted or externally restricted but we have to focus on this externally restricted here so that's where uh, you have donor restricted money or funding in this case uh, the local government body here we had is was uh, we, it was externally restricted money, a federal money coming ministered through the state here. And when you have that externally restricted money coming in, you have to find, apply your revenue rules here. And again, this is, it's sort of like modified accrual accounting, but you have to apply the, your, apply your restricted dollar revenue rules here. You can't, in this case, recognize any revenues here until the dollar, there's donor restricted or externally restricted monies have actually been spent. Okay, so that's the key point here with those externally restricted dollars. Okay, so uh, we'll, that'll end our discussion here.
on those uh, accounting for restricted assets or monies.